All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome, welcome. Hey, what up, Treads? Tread says they're here for the triple 25 lumen streak. You and me both. Let's make it happen. Let's make history. Hey, what's up, Wheels? Welcome. Yeah, so last week we did get a 25 Lumen Stone win in the, the weekend contest, which is pretty wild. I didn't think I'd have time. And if that run took 30 minutes more, I, I probably would have ran out of time. <laughs> it went pretty late into my Sunday. I would have had to debate calling in sick to work the next day. You'd have to understand some things are just that important. But it did not come to that. We made it through. Sounds like there are some serious considerations um, to nerf obstruction <laughs> as a result. Well, not just as a result of that, but it sounded like that may have been the tipping point for some people. <laughs> You've been slowly watching, you're down to D27. Cool, cool. Yeah, I stopped at D28 on the stream. So I did one level of D27. And then um, stopped. And the rest of the, the run went similar to D27. Although I, so I didn't want to take the time to like figure out the optimal strategy for what I was doing. With a slash three obstruction, it was actually pretty risky to like, because I could really only get three crystals ahead of me, and then I'd tunnel two, and then I'd have to get close to that third crystal to create more crystals, and that was kind of the strategy. But you had to, like... There's always a chance that that last crystal dissolves when you get next to it before you add more obstruction crystals. So, like, every time there was, like, a risk, and if that dissolves, then if there's enemies on the other side, they get that 25% to spot you. And that only really matters for dragons, I guess, and partially liches. Um, so that was like always risky. And I think there were like optimal ways to play it. And I never really sat down to figure that out. I just kind of YOLO'd it slightly. As I moved on, I started like approaching areas with longer sight lines or at angles where that was like less of a hazard, but I, I just had to kind of move. Apparently Ascension Streaks are too easy. We're looking at Mastery Streaks now. You know, it's funny. Before I got back into Brogue um, on this stint that I'm on, there was a, a post on the Brogue forum subreddit about someone getting a four-game streak. It, it was Lead Duck, actually. It was actually in 173, I think. Or 174. I, th I think it was one of the older versions. Um... And I thought that was kind of like an impressive baseline just based on people talking about it. But no, I think if you just want a regular win, you could do like way more than that in Brogue. It's probably about as ascendable as NetHack, if I had to guess. And NetHack has had a few 25 to 30 game streaks and then an outlier of a 61 game <laughs> streak. Um, I think the difference is probably in Brogue, there is extended game content, so anyone that's able to get streaks like that is probably going to be taking harder challenges, which are going to mean they don't do that. And also, Brogue is highly memeable, um, so you probably try some weird builds sometimes that lower your odds. It's a lot like Cogmind in that way, too. In Cogmind, you could, you could probably win every game if you just wanted to get a basic win in Cogmind. There's a few, like, outliers, but the percentages are so, so low. Brogue does throw some really hard runs at you from time to time, so I think it's RNG dependent, too. I think the hardest seeds are less winnable than the hardest seeds in other games. So that's, that's why I don't think streaks are, like, mean anything. 
better approximation if you're trying to get that kind of data point is just a win percentage from a player that's actually trying to win every game, which is, is rare that that's actually even the case. Because if you get that hard seed at the end of your streak, well, it's always going to be at the end of it. But if you get it like one game in or like 15 games in, like, does that say anything about the player's skill? No, it doesn't. You saw the potential for an obstruction build, but at almost lowest possible in chance, it was never going to be willing to spend 900 hours on that build. Yeah, I, I read your, um, your your summary of how your run went, and I, I like what you did. You you went with like the fun option, and I, I could totally understand no one wanting to take the time to do something like that. Um, and I said afterwards, like I I'm not going to do this again in a weekend contest. <laughs> Maybe that's something I plink plink away at like a, a few floors at a time during like across like a week or two if I want to go for that but um I'm not spending like my whole weekend playing brogue like that again um it is hard to pass up like a potential mastery eh, not even if you've done it once but even if you wanted to go for that I feel like I would just quote unquote like quit the brogue weekend contest maybe submit my current score and just say I'm gonna finish this throughout the week because I want to go for the lumen stones or whatever Hex difficulty mass seems to be all front loaded. Um, that's true. And net hack, you're kind of putting together the pieces of a, a build that can tackle pretty much any problem in the game. So yeah, it's definitely front loaded. You're not gonna start running into like dragons and horrors or things like those that you haven't broke like that that make the end game challenging. You do like streaking a lot for heavy variance games. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting as well and something like bro because you're going to end up with a different um a different build every time pretty much you're not going to be able to play into the same skill sets so you have to be a very skilled and um you know well versed in in many different like play styles to do well in a game like bro like that The concept of a possibility of the seed being extremely unfair makes it exciting. Hell yeah. I agree with that too. And I've been wanting for Brogue to throw another one of these like difficult seeds at me. There's like two really difficult ones that in my Brogue career that come to mind. Um, and I, I just want more experience with those because I think they force you to make hard decisions um, that that you don't think you want to make and they're suboptimal, but like they're how you have to survive. Like enchanting bad armor or like, like a bad weapon or something. Your, the ground giveaway streaks all involved skilled teleports at some point. That makes sense. Um, it, it, even in like net hack, I, I used to like watch um, like VODs all, all the time. Because NetHack makes recordings um, of players and stuff. And like that 61 game streak, there was a game like 20, a run like 20 games in that they got zapped with a, a wand of death at one point and it missed them. It's like a dice roll is the only thing that stopped you from, you know, losing it at run 20 instead of run 61. And there were other points where like a high roll of damage from a soldier ant they were fighting could have ended their run. So at some point, like RNG comes into play and like, yeah, you just got to get lucky sometimes. If you're doing some kind of like quote unquote streak where like you have to do it without having like taking any chances with RNG, like it's going to be much more difficult. You, you take chances in like all these runs and it's really just about mitigating risk and like leveraging the, the advantages you do have. Uh, let's get into this. I'm guessing um, someone here has probably played this seed before. They didn't include a screenshot, so if someone can tell me if I'm playing the wrong seed, if I enter this in wrong, I would appreciate it. And I guess I'll double check it myself. Looks like it. Oh, another like seed.
This is a seed. Awesome. Thank you, Treads. Hey, Crestitator. Welcome. What would you think of an opt-in difficulty filter for seeds? It would be pretty easy to intentionally run the catalog on a seed and give it a score and bucket by those scores. The new game could be new game or new game nightmare, give you a seed from the appropriate bucket. Um, yeah, I, I guess the community kind of does a version of that already just by like the way that people share seeds. So that would kind of just like, it'd almost be like having a spoiler free-ish seed catalog thing in game. Um, I like the idea in general, because people kind of want to do those things. Obviously, it, it's optional. If, if things are optional, they're harmless. I think people would, en would enjoy that. And that then we could do, like, just play hard seeds if we wanted to. Or, like, newer players could play easy seeds if they wanted to. I think it's a fun idea. Alright. I guess we'll, uh, get right into this. Could make streaking more significant as well, like streaking like hard games or something. Is that the exit? How does this contest work? So on, um, the Brogue Forum subreddit, reddit slash r slash Brogue Forum, every week they post a weekly contest seed, and then everyone plays the same seed. Um, it's kind of an honor system where you don't, you just play it once and you don't have spoilers or help or anything. And you get, uh, it, there's like a ranking at the end just based on score. And score is kind of like a bad metric for progress generally, but when everyone's playing the same seed, seed it works pretty well. Um, we don't really play for to win or anything. I don't think a lot of people really do. It's really fun to compare seeds in a game like Brogue, though, um, with other players because there's so many decision points where you can diverge, or sometimes you realize like you missed like a, a nice opportunity or an item or something, especially because of the food clock in Brogue. Sometimes you start skipping floors and stuff. Um, so it's always like funny seeing everyone's story and comparing how your run went with theirs and all that. Um, so that's the gist of it. I feel like you just kind of have to assume there are no secret doors on D1. They can only spawn in key holders, which means generally you'll find a vault and know that there's a secret door somewhere. I wonder how often you get a seed that has a secret door key holder on D1 that holds like a, a strong item behind it, like, like a game changing item. level was such a satisfying loop. In practice, you should go back upstairs and check if you don't find a vault soon enough. Yeah, you said they're guaranteed by D4, right? This looks like we might have to go through water to get somewhere along a long path of eels. Oh, hey, what's up, Blue? 
Keep forgetting how acidic Rogue is. Yeah, it's great. Monkey ally, I don't care about. Um, there's going to be like a door right here. So we'll be able to peek in here and see if there's any items. Otherwise, I'd probably just skip that room. There's some interesting value in having an ally this early. It really probably does like cut down some variance if you want it to like... If you're in like a corridor fighting like a pack of jackals or something, you could swap places with it to like reposition if your health gets low or something. Also, it seems like jellies won't spawn behind you if there's an ally behind you. I don't know if it's like guaranteed. Well, I ended up killing them anyway, so let's just grab them. It is guaranteed. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's almost worth just grabbing this ally to help with jellies then. Which aren't threatening, but a lot of jelly encounters when you only have leather in your starting dagger can end up with you having um, like half health. Three scrolls likely to have triple enchanting already. position, huh? I hate wasting turns this early, but I guess I gotta pop this bloat and just let it go away. I can I can take some damage from the caustic gas and heal up on those uh bloodware in the bottom right too. So can't even get to me. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and drop something here. Oh, that monkey is dead! Hmm, it actually faded pretty fast. Hey, monkey made it! I do like to test my, my allies with challenges like that. More food too. I like having generous early food seeds. That does mean that we're probably gonna not see food for a while. Actually, I guess I don't like seeing it because food fills up your inventory. Hey Zylan, how's it going? A protection charm. Ooh, I like protection charms. Protection charms are really good. Yeah, more stuff to yeet into chasms. Hm. Well, there goes the monkey. Couldn't fight one jackal. I've never built around a protection charm, but the the numbers just say they're incredible. So 
So D3 is when I've started searching lately. I think I'll do that again. I'm gonna keep doing that. I may be biased because I found a secret door a few floors ago. A broadsword. Eh, maybe it's not as important. There's not a lot of value in using traps to your advantage until around D4, probably. Which is when that's when searching starts to become really valuable. And you can always like double check obvious secret rooms. Yeah, that's the dream, Jonah Dab. Protection, a good weapon, and reaping. Oops. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's a jelly. I thought that was a freaking jackal. <laughs> I was I was kiting it like I would a jackal. I thought I was moving two tiles per turn. I actually don't like the jelly with the amount of health I have here. Probably okay with a uh, protection charm. Actually, I don't even know if the protection charm is good right now. Protection Charm plus three Enchant Scrolls ain't bad. Um, I think I'm gonna pop this a few times with darts. Ah, oh, you spawned behind me. Of course you did. I guess you die in one hit now, that's fine. Okay, we didn't really take any damage that fight. That worked really well. Imagine Jelly that moved two times speed like a jackal. That's actually really interesting because it would surround you as it splits. One that moves fast and flees a proc bloodwort. Now we're talking. Speaking of blood work. Eh. Yellow. Rather, it is a state of mind which you constantly strive toward. This all comes from an understanding that ideas aren't static, but fluid, like water. Ah, our first key holder. Like water. Oh, this one. My old friend. I feel like we could leverage the protection charm into dealing with this if we really had to. And oh my god, there's more food. Um, but I'm gonna proceed with caution. Is there a secret room down here? Probably not. I, I, there probably can't be a secret room there. Just a little weird level layout here. Start a deli. Mm. 
this is how you get the conjurers. Um, he actually can't run this way. He's about to trap himself, actually. I want to finish him off if he's still around. Nope. Thank you for the gold, sir. Here's the vault. What was in there? A wand. I wonder if lowering a, a bloat to this trap. Popping it and then grabbing the key. It has some kind of... Something I've been wondering about this is using like gases to overwhelm the paralysis gas. But you have to do it before you grab the key because I think the paralysis gas always touches you pretty much. All right, um, let's use test some items. I have a few double stacks of potions here and a double stack of scrolls that could help us down here potentially. Go down 10 floors and bait a zombie here. There you go. Strength. Confusion. Oh, confusion might be our ticket. Maybe we can try our uh, our strategy. Hitting Sanctuary next to the key? Yeah, un until a rat spawns on the wall next to you. That's like a rare occurrence that I'm a little concerned about with these traps now too. I think we throw Confusion and then step onto this thing. We might have an answer. You said broke form that confusion is highly consistent for this. Prove you wrong. <laughs> confusion is what saved us last time. Confusion has saved me so many times. It saved me from this key holder last time. It saved me from trapping myself in caustic gas and my own obstruction crystals. Yeah, it's great for the confused rats. The problem is if you get rats that sit on the outside of the cloud and then come in once you're unconfused, I guess you can always dart them. And you'll get confused rats that bump outside. And yeah, I don't know. Let's see what else we have though. Scent. Whoops. Could I have come up and just fallen right back down? I'm guessing it places you outside if there's still a tile there. All right, I want to test this scroll as well. Probably supposed to wait till I heal. Dang. Or maybe I just died to a goblin? Yeah, we kill us most of the time. Oh! Do I roll the 90% chance? There's like a 10% times... 41% times like the chance like this guy doesn't even kill me most of the time that we just die die here which I don't like but those odds are better than anything else I could do right now oh I have a protection charm let's just use that should have used that earlier he hit
Now what's scary is... Do I move and invite other enemies to spawn? I want to go to that blood wart. I think we're better off moving. I have darts, so as long as I don't run into something like... I wonder if I'm supposed to enchant the protection charm right now. In case something else stumbles upon us when our health is low. I got a bit of health now, back already, so we're probably okay. Ooh, tall grass in a corridor? Oh, I found the enchanting scroll. Um, I guess we're going to enchant the protection charm. So what, what is this stack? Magic mapping. That's a lot of mapping scrolls. Okay, so this is our kit for dealing with the rat trap. I think I'm supposed to explore another floor. Oh, you knew they were not enchant just because of how many there were? I've been digging through the seeds. So I'm, I'm, I have like a seeded run thing I, I was planning and I, I noticed some seeds have a lot of enchant scrolls, although I don't know how, how common it actually is. I like pulling these jellies into the unknown. I'm gonna dart that one. to heal a little bit. Right, we'll roll with that. And this is the floor where I think I want to search more. Oh my god, there's blood wart right there. I just rested to heal. I moved like one more tile from where I was standing, I would have known. Trap. Another key holder, right? Uh, maybe not. Mm, there is one on this floor. Hmm. 
So this one has to be like chasms or turrets or something. I don't think it could be flood because this is attached to this, I'm pretty sure. Usually flood has smaller, smaller legs. Yep. Wait, what? Well, there it goes. <laughs> that was slow. Completely non-threatening chasm key holder, okay. I didn't realize the, the tiles light up before they turn into chasm too. I walked like right next to where the chasm was. Just RNG. All right, Staff of Haste, Flail, Telepathy Charm, Obstruction, Beckoning, Scale Mail, Spear. Oh, look, Obstruction indeed. <laughs> Maybe we'll come back for that once we grab the amulet. Hmm. That does solve the rat key holder, though. Let's just grab that. Oh, there's a charm hiding down here. Oh, that's a telepathy charm. Do you feel a bit of dread when you see obstruction? Yeah, if, if this other vault has a uh, tunneling in it, we know we could be in for a tough run. Used to quit runs of teleportation, charm, obstruction, tunneling. Yeah, I could totally see not wanting to play those builds. They're predictable, and if you've played them a few times, it's like... There's, like, not a lot of challenge. to play this in a way where I could zap obstruction here. I was hoping to have like a one tile gap. Maybe I'm supposed to eh, I was thinking about doing something cheeky with the stairs, but we have two zaps left. I'm trying to think how, how, how I can create a gap. Because if I obstruct here, they're all going to unobstruct like immediately because of how it works. If you have a chain of monsters. You almost want to do it in the opening somehow. Oh, this is actually perfect. All right. Um, some rat did not do what he was supposed to do. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go swap this staff out now. This will be by about turn 3350, it'll be fully recharged again. You died to the rat trap after dissenting the vent. 
Wait, so you threw Descent and then stepped on the... Stepped on the key holder. Did it come back spewing paralysis gas? <laughs> what, what was... I'm curious what the interaction was there. It came back with paralysis... I, I did not think that's how that happened. That's kind of an annoying way to go because it's a really unintuitive interaction. Yeah, definitely not the behavior I would have expected. Um, oh, yeah, you're right, Jonah Dab. I don't think stabs do recharge outside of your inventory. So this will never recharge unless I pick it back up. I want to check out one of these weapons, though. Or one of these other items. Um, so I could either test the scale mail, the flail, or the spear. I think runic weapons have a lot more impact than runic armor. Um, flails cannot be runic yet. I think in the current version of, um, like on the ZE, the CE, like I don't know what they call it, but like the it's not like the current release, like 1.9.3, but like the the most current like version on GitHub would have potential runic flails. We could, if I wanted to kill some rats with this this spear downstairs, we could totally tell if it was uh, runic or not. There's a minuscule chance fails will be runic. Isn't it like 10% if, if you know it's enchanted? I should drop some stuff here. Drop some stuff in here. I guess there's no point to dropping stuff, actually, because I already cleared the level where we're going. No runic proc on a sneak attack. Not a great sign. So sneak attacks double the chance of a runic um, proccing. Or they bring it halfway up to 100% if you're already close. Whichever is lower. Pick Staff of Haste and if the later depths have tunneling, at least be playing a hyper meme instead of extraction tunneling. Speaking of hyper memes, on one of the maps on my last run, I used recharging and tunneling to like map out like across a lake <laughs> because tunneling lights up everything that you can see. I know that was one of the joke builds we've talked about. Health charm. Oh my God. It does have tunneling. Okay, so the decision is generally to to not take tunneling or like not do this, but do we want a three streak, 25 lumen stone wins? Because this run has potential. Or at least you back to back in the in the weekly contest. Like, we could make history. Is there anything else around the corner? Invisibility charm? Man, broadsword, 
invis protection. If we found a reaping ring, we could have such a fun build. I don't know what to do here. You think if you pull off a third obstruction tunnel super win, you'll have sealed obstruction? Fan I feel like I should do it just once. To... To just say I've... Um, j just the prospect of back-to-back -back 25 Lumen Sun wins and three in a row. Or back to back in in the weekend contest and then three in a row, just to say I did that once and then just never pick up a obstruction staff again. And if you actually have like a, a substantial obstruction staff, it's not quite as um, tedious as what I was doing last week. I'd love to get like a clairvoyance ring or something though. It's kind of tedious if you don't have like detection methods. But we could easily spec and and you know, I feel like I have to do this. Yeah. Because I want to do a wisdom list and recharging list tunneling obstruction win too, because I don't think a lot of people realize that that's feasible. Okay. Let's just go for it. Should I Should I test the whip here? See if there's a fun runic on the whip, maybe? Because we're not going to use tunneling until we come back down anyways. But that doesn't mean I have to walk all the way back over here. Nah, I think we just go. Our, feet, our fate is sealed. Um, again, I don't need to drop anything here. Oh wait, this is the higher one. Okay, so we're going down anyways. Okay. Okay, and this spear seems to not be runic. I think we would have definitely gotten a proc by now. Especially with all the sneak attacks. Okay, so this is actually going to be like... I mean, who the heck knows? I'm just gonna say 3760, we'll be at 3-3 again. Have I played obstruction tunneling runs with a difficult ascent? What do you mean by ascent? Because usually we're just going down. Oh, okay. That's what I thought you meant. Getting to the amulet. Um, so the last one, I... No. Because I never played it the whole way through. So I'm actually kind of curious about that. I, don't, I think that's going to be the hard part. I want to take a note that there's a telepathy charm here. Just in case we get an opportunity to swap this out for like another obstruction staff or something. Because telepathy would. Telepathy with obstruction tunneling would just, would just be 
I'd love that. That would make the the Lumen Sun Death so much easier. Um, all right, let's do it. Because, yeah, you can't get obstruction and tunneling online for a while. And even just sinking, like, a bunch of enchants into obstruction early makes it hard to deal with enemies. It'd be great if I could find, like, a sword or some kind of improvement over the dagger that I don't have to, like, commit enchants to, like I do with the broadsword. Like, a, a sword or an axe. Like, a nice, like, bonus, like, increase in damage. The protection charm should help. Um, okay, I need to make some... I need to test some more potions, I think. Viz, nice. I could enchant obstruction right away. We may as well. I think last time I did this, I put obstruction slash 12 and tunneling like slash six or something, six or seven. What was my build? If I wanted to go something similar to that, we'd have three enchants into tunneling, three or four, and then nine total into obstruction. Which is 12 scrolls. I already put one into the protection charm. So that potentially leaves like two-ish enchant scrolls to spread around to something else. Should take advantage of this invisibility. Punch the goblin. I had a feeling I didn't equip my dagger again. Fire immunity? Ooh, I feel like I'm supposed to test a bunch of these now. At the very least, incineration does nothing. I guess Halu sucks. Unless I find it before I find life. Actually, we want life before we do death five, I think. So yeah, I think we do want to test potions. Speed. There's life. Okay, I think I have to stop now that I found life. Until I find another one just because of Halu. Oh wait, yeah. I was gonna say we know that there's a door there because of the Oh my, that's a lot of freaking kobolds. Do I survive a fight with this many kobolds? I guess if they just come at me one at a time because they're guarding. I'm gonna let you heal up. Oh, you actually healed fast. I 
And now I can use tunneling to like pseudo search for secret rooms. Keep the mystic alive till D26. I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't think I'm going to take any additional tedious challenges <laughs> onto this run. Trying to keep an ally alive could be an interesting challenge for another run, though. Yeah, I think it, it's definitely plausible with obstruction. Where you sacrifice the the one ring? Look at that outcropping. Oh, it is a feat. Awesome. Yeah, I still want to do the feats at some point. Four jackals. Oh, there's our axe. I had the axe to fight these jackals with. Um, I guess I survived these jackals with the mystic. As long as the the mystic doesn't. Wait, can they see me? One in front can. This is what the mystic can't do. Is walk in there. There we go. Didn't even take damage. Just test some scrolls. Getting an ID on our obstruction staff would be nice. Me IDing stabs? What a time to be alive. Oh, I'd also like to equip this axe. Oh, I thought the toad saw me because they turned around. So from this position, summon monster summons nothing. I wonder if I even ID it. I guess I had to ID it from the no effect. Hmm, it's identify. So you have two of those. Um, so I'm going to identify obstruction and then probably the axe. It does identify. I thought it would. Brogue is really good about those things. Are you up to 5-5? Five, five? Damn, how did I... I guess when you enchant a staff, it gives you the minimum charge for free. And then it also speeds up the remaining charges. I feel like I was nowhere close to having the staff fully charged when it was at 0 3. Axe can be worth identifying before reading other scrolls. Oh, I guess the risk here was that I negated my, my mystic, too. Forgot about that. Um, yeah, I think I just want to ID the axe right now, though. 
I'd love to just start using the axe right away. Oh my god. Okay. That's gonna help us survive before our obstruction gets online. A plus three axe. That, yeah, that is huge. Is this another key holder? This looks like an, an eel trap. Hmm, guess not. I think you do get layouts like that sometimes. Always nice to take advantage of natural enchants. Yeah, um, because I was never going to enchant my weapon, so finding one that's naturally enchanted and that has a strength requirement that I could start using right away. Like, ser I'd rather have that than a, a broadsword or like a war axe or like a war pike right now. because we're never going to be able to use the ladder until we get our strength up that high naturally. And so plus three protection charm and an axe. A plus three axe feels pretty good right now. There's a wooden barricade. I can now, just in time, to fight vampire bats. Oh, they're actually wrecking me. Can I get some uh, protection, please? Guess I have to do it myself. Whoops. I ditch the broadsword. We're, we're literally never going to use this. Its only value is commutation fodder, but I think if we come to that, the axe becomes just as valuable. Um, I guess with an axe, we don't even care about the Goblin Mystic, huh? Oh my god, too much stuff. Th th see, this is the early food problem I was talking about. So, they enchanted me when there's nothing over here, so I think they can see the Goblin Mystic coming back. No, what do you see that I don't? You actually got my stuff. Caustic scented ration? I don't even know what that means.
You think the last throw was doable past the corner? Um, I used Shift T to auto throw, and it targeted the the conjurer instead of my last target, which was the monkey. So that's why I, I think it didn't. Do I just kill you? Yeah. But my mystic makes it. Nope. If that was the only eel in there, maybe I should have killed it to save my mystic. The, the mystic's actually pretty clutch right now. Cost of gas is kind of lemony. Yeah, it probably would be. Protection charm recharged. 235 turns, it's not bad. We're up to 68% of your total health. You have 40 health right now. That's 27 protection, not bad. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value in the plus three protection charm over just having the plus two that we had. Bogs are so scary. Just knowing that you could lose over half your health at any time if you're in a bog is something I don't like. Okay, so I didn't find anything, so I'm guessing I have a potion of incineration. Shoot, what potions do we find on this floor? I guess one of my two stacks. Can I just tunnel through the barricade? I wonder if that's a thing. I'm gonna do it for science. Sweet. I guess I should've just walked in here earlier. Science achieved. All right, let's bring that beat. Uh, this stuff all sucks for what we're doing. Definitely gonna see what's behind door number two. Oh my god, I can't pick up the key. I guess I can use test some more scrolls.
Easiest door key of your life? Yep. <laughs> that was excellent. I love it when you have the tools to deal with some of those without even needing to like do whatever you're supposed to do. So we know one of these two stacks is incineration. Oh, that's actually good intel. Actually, that keeps science. No, it doesn't. All right. All right, my pack is currently full. So that's fine. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff we don't really care about with our axe. And they just lost her support. Oh, I didn't pick up the key. Dude, I tunneled into this thing to test scrolls and I didn't even do it. Oh, man. What a noob. Test scrolls anymore, huh? No blood word up here. gate, right? It's like, just go for it. Oh, teleportation, that's a good idea. Okay, that was the only... Two stack of scrolls. I'm okay with reading the others, especially now that I have a weapon that I don't mind protecting. Protect weapon. What do you know? I guess I may as well go through the, other, the rest of these. Move curse. Sanctuary. Cool. Um, I'm holding off until I find a life pot to do any potion IDing, because I just don't want to deal with Halu right now. Hey, and there's our first acid mound, right after I already got my weapon protected. Another protection charm, lightning, invisibility wand, ring of regen, war axe, leather armor. I'm really curious what the leather armor could be, but ring of regen is kind of a no-brainer here. Regen plus obstruction is really powerful because you can obstruct yourself and heal. And also helps with the food clock, which is a bit of an issue potentially with this build, which could end up playing pretty slow. With Protect Weapon, drinking Halu right there was probably fine. That's a good point. We're not going to run into anything too dangerous on the next few floors that Halu is going to like make a problem like by surprising us. 
And if it does, I always have obstruction and teleport. I actually kind of like the idea of drinking more potions. Oh, there's detect the magic. So we found incineration. Oop, no, I wanted to call you. Domination? That's an interesting play. Wait, are liches easy to dominate because they have low health? Is it based on their actual health and not a percentage? My remaining blue potions are either Telepathy or Levitation. This pairing is worth an ID scroll to me, because of how good Telepathy is. So I'm not going to use test that. I think one sneak... Uh, it's a percentage, but it's easy to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Lavender pot, I'm gonna throw behind a door. Rapier was enchanted. I like throwing negative potions behind doors in case they're um, deadly lichen. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break here, guys. This will be about two or three minutes. I'll be right back. Um, region obstruction tunneling, not bad so far. I am curious how the mid to late depths are going to go with this build once this war axe or this uh, plus three axe stops being OP. Um, but we'll see how it goes. 